Hi guys, so following my video on Sunday when I showed off my new paint racks um, uh, I had some ships on the table and a couple of people have asked me if I would do a painting tutorial to show you how I've been dealing with my ships. Now uh, this is going to be real quick, rough and ready because there's no great dark art to the way that I'm painting them. In fact, if you go into the back of the uh, Mad for War rules, there's a whole section in there about how to paint these lovely little models. Um, really simple with contrast paints. I, I've got a slight variation on the technique that I'm using, um, still with contrast paints and largely the same colours that um, Barry Hilton has recommended, um, but it's just a slight different uh, arrangement to the, the steps, if you like. Um, now, as you can see, when we've made these, when I've put these models together, I've not put any uh, rigging or rattlings on them. Um, as a group, we've decided to skip that stage entirely. We are a group of, uh, we've, as Re Postage Rejects have decided to do the, the Anglo Dutch Wars, using these ships from Ark Royal Miniatures, um, using the Mad for War rules so that we can continue to play some Anglo Dutch Wars games uh, because we had such a good time at the Rapture Gaming Festival uh, a couple of months ago. Um, but what the problem is, our group is of varied. Uh, skill if you like when it comes to both painting and modeling um, but also we wanted to make this a really quick project uh, where we could get it done relatively fast and get gaming in a very short space of time so we've all bought a fleet of ships each I've gone for uh, one of the uh, English squadrons some of the other groups have gone for Dutch and French and privateers and so on um, and we decided that the, the quickest way to get them on the table basically was to just skip the rigging frankly I mean, it looks fantastic on the ships that have been done, um, but it does take modelling these ships and painting them to a whole different level that uh, some of us are just not prepared to do. It was a level of madness that we decided to skip. Um, uh, we may well change our mind in future, but for the time being, so we can get some ships down on the table and play some games, we decided to just assemble the models as they are. And uh, they're actually pretty robust. The, there's nice holes in the in the deck for the masts. The sails are cast as part of the masts. Um, and with a little bit of drilling to improve the holes, um, they go in quite rigidly, and then with a super glue, then they're pretty, they're pretty sturdy. Um, so that's the basic ship. So um, we start off with a, a, a simple light coloured uh, primer. In my case, I'm using uh, Vallejo's uh, surface primer uh, with a little bit of plain white mixed in just to improve the consistency and lighten it down even more because this is a slightly uh, grey colour in here. Well, it is grey. Um, and that gives a nice consistent white primer to these ships. Um, a good base start for the contrast paints. So this is one of the ships that I've uh, finished. This is a, a 60 to 70 gunner ship, so pretty robust. Um, and uh, for the Blue Squadron, British uh, Blue Squadron, um, and you can see they, they look pretty nice even without the rigging on. Um, and the contrast paints have worked out really well. Uh, but having done a few ships, I think I've sort of realised that there's some things that I need to do that are slightly out of sequence compared to the, the painting uh, technique that Barry has suggested in his book and it's purely a personal choice um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear away these models get one out and we'll work our way through it so I can try and show you what I'm doing for a really basic job and this is basic I'm not by any means as skilled as some people who paint these and I'm sure there'll be some who do all the rigging and everything who'll be screaming quietly into their uh, paint pots uh, because I'm not putting all the rigging on but this is like a real basic a starting position if you like if you want to get into this period uh, as I say I quite like the Arc Royal miniatures um, with the, the cast sails on it just makes it so much easier and the, the finished result I think looks perfectly good we're going to do we haven't based them yet because what we're going to do as a group is we're going to sit down and we're all going to work out a consistent basing uh, technique and do it all together so for this really basic painting tutorial I'm going to start with just one of the uh, 70 to 80 gunner ships just do the one um, and I'm going to just go through my process to give a really, really basic paint job. Um, sufficient to get, to get it down on the table. 
uh, as I say, experts of doing naval ships will probably be rolling their eyes at my technique, but this is just to prove how easy this is, how simple it is to paint these models. So uh, I'm doing most of the painting, the initial painting, with just four contrast paints. So we have snake uh, skeleton hold, Nazareg yellow, snake bite yellow, uh, the snake bite leather, sorry, and wild. Now they are the, the four basic colours I'm going to use to do my ships. You can use slightly different colours. These are the ones recommended in the Mad for War rules book uh, in their painting section. And I've largely gone with that, although in some cases I, I slightly water down the colours. So for instance, I found Wildwood to be a little bit dark. So I just add a touch of water um, when I take out the... I, I take some of the contrast paints and put it in a, 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 a dish, add a tad of water just to thin it slightly and it goes on a little bit lighter. I prefer that myself. So having primed the model, the next thing I do is I'm going to give this a, a very light wash of snake bite leather, so using the contrast paint. The reason I'm doing this is because when I first did it I tried to just paint the relevant areas of the ship, so the ship sides and the deck and the sails and so on. And no matter how careful I was to make sure that it went, that I painted right up to the edges, there was always ended up being little pop spots of white primer underneath that showed through. When I did the second batch that I painted, I gave the whole model a wash in snake bite leather and the end result was no more white spots and actually I preferred the way it came out. So this is my first deviation, if you like, from the, the painting instructions that Barry suggested in his rule book. So for this, it's just um, rub off most of the, the contrast paints and just basically give the whole model a really quick wash, making sure that you cover everything um, and then just leave the whole thing to dry afterwards. Um, I mean, you don't have to do this stage, but I just found that it meant that there were no white spots shown through it. It just made the whole process so much simpler, I found, um, because I spent a lot of time just going back, um, filling in gaps and spots that were showing through, um, whereas when I did the second batch and I gave them this sort of wash in snake bite leather, um, I didn't have to do any of that. And actually, snake bite leather is the colour that's used on the sails, or at least I've got with on the sails. And that just means that you're doing that stage now rather than uh, two steps down the line. Um, the main thing to do with, with this is to be careful to make sure there's no pooling. Uh, so, you know, when you've finished laying it on, go back and make sure that you've smoothed it out and you'll get a nice, even consistency to the whole one. Incidentally, while I'm doing this, um, I'll just say that mounting them on uh, pieces of lollipop stick just as a, a one stick across the bottom is more than sufficient to hold the model with a little bit of super glue and of course it breaks off nice and easy and you can clean the base of the ship before mounting on, on whatever base you want them to put them on um, it just means it's easy to hold these things without damaging your paint job as you go along um, obviously different painters will have different techniques but this is what I've done uh, one of the, a thick piece of lollipop stick underneath and a section of the normal size lollipop stick and just glue the ship to the uh, along the keel of the hull is more than sufficient to hold it um, yeah, uh, super glue is pretty good for that sort of thing and I tend to use cheaper super glues for this sort of temporary fixes because they break off really easy when the time comes so I've given this ship uh, a quick wash in the snake bite uh, skeleton hauled colour. Um, I'm going to seal that bottle up because I've already managed to knock one bottle over. Uh, I do hate dropper uh, bottles rather than droppers, uh, so I may be changing my to paints at some point. Um, the next step is just to go around and just collect up any pooling. You don't want um, spotches if you can avoid it, so just see if you can pick out because it's just important to, to drag off some of this um, excess paint at this point because you want it nice and smooth particularly on the on the, the sail so um, this is a I've washed the brush it's slightly damp but not wet um, just enough to pull off any excess before it sets um, and then you can just leave the, the uh, contrast paints to do their job and to settle into the recesses and just give a nice even colour and as I say it's because it pulls around the edges of the sections like particularly inside the, the rail on the ship when I try to paint it by hand 
um, with just the deck colour, they ended up being white on the inside of the rail, whereas, whereas I'm painting the whole model with the, the, uh, one wash of this colour, um, uh, I've got no white spotches. Um, and obviously at this stage when you're just pooling off, if you see any areas where uh, the paint hasn't, you haven't quite got into all of the bits for the white, you can just use some of the excess that you've pulled off elsewhere to just dab on. I mean, like I say, this is this is effectively a very light undercoat wash because uh, most of this model is going to be receiving other colour. Uh, the next step is to put the model down and don't touch it. Clean your brush. Leave that to dry. Walk away. Let this dry properly before you apply any other colours on top. Now that the base wash, if you like, of snake by uh, skeleton ball has uh, dried and it's nice and even, uh, it's now time to start painting the vessel properly. So we're going to do the most difficult bit first, which is basically the deck, because it's in amongst all the rigging and everything else and, and the mast. So we do that and the colour we're going to go I'm going to use is Nasdaq yellow. Again this is the recommendation uh, in, for Barry Hill in his book, in his um, rules mad for war that say there's a section at the back that, that suggests some colours. Um, there's a lot of variation in ships but I've just gone with what he's suggested. Um, and it's just a matter of putting that on. Now it's going to come out a slightly different colour because it's going over the, the other colour, the skeleton hall colour underneath but it's going to be distinct enough once you've done the, uh, uh, the rest of the hull of the ship and so on. Um, that it will stand out as being yellow. So, and again, you ain't got to worry too much because we've washed it and the, the, the previous wash has gone right to the edges. You don't have to worry too much about being too uh, accurate with this. Obviously, you've got to try not to get it elsewhere if you can help it, but it's, it's pretty easy to go on. Um, doesn't matter if it's a little bit thick in some areas, um, it's going to go on nicely, and then you can. Uh, worry about the darker colours and the other parts of the ship afterwards. So now I'm going to do the hull of the ship. Now the colour they suggest, that Barry suggests, is wildwood. Now I find this a little bit dark, um, so what I do is I will um, water it down slightly. So in which case I'm going to actually draw off a bit of this and put a couple of big dabs I use a ceramic dish uh, because I find that with all of my paints uh, they wash off really easy from a ceramic dish. A bit of warm water. This paint tray was covered in paint earlier. Um, soaked it for five minutes in some hot water and then rubbed everything off with my finger. No brushes or anything required. Um, so there I've got a bit of wild wood in there. I'm just going to put one drop of clean water in there. Just a tad, just to water it down a little bit. Mix it and some of it's here. I could do with just a little bit more. I think I put a little bit too much of the wild wood in, so I'll put one more drop of water. Just to water the colour down a bit, reduce it down a little bit. Um, and again, just apply it onto the sides. You don't got to worry too much about being too... You want to be accurate, you want to keep it within the, the model, but contrast paints are just so easy to work with. Um, or, or indeed speed paints, you know, I happen to be using contrast paints because that's what I've been collecting. And it's the colours that Barry suggested, so I'm going with the colours that he suggested. Now, originally, when I put the Wildwood on my first couple of models, this came out very, very dark. Watering it down with just a couple of drops of water makes it a little bit lighter, but I think as well improves the look of the ship because you can see some of the detail. Um, it, it just shows the slightly bleached woodwork, if you like, of the ship. Uh, so I prefer that look. So you can see it's really easy to go on. I'm not doing this with any particular uh, skill. Uh, my hands are a bit wobbly, but it, you know, Contrast paints are a doddle to use. And then of course I'm going to be doing all the back end of the ship with, with gold and so on later on. So we're just block painting it in with 
with this watered down wildwood. I've made a little bit too much of the, the wash in the pot here, but normally I'd be doing more than one vessel at a time. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I'm only going to do the one ship. The next step is to paint the masts, and for that we're going to use snake bite leather. Um, and you know, as most of the model I've done, it's going to be done with a fairly, relatively small brush and hopefully a steady hand. Now I don't worry too much about the fact that there's a, a gap where the, where the sails would normally be. Yeah. I'm just going to paint all of it in, in the darker colour. just so much easier to work with when you're doing something like this because you ain't got to worry too much about laying down a thick coat of paint um, so this is relatively straightforward what we do I, I find with the contrast paints what you're basically doing is you're block painting and then as we have other models you're going to be tidying up some of the detail work that comes later so I've done the masts, but now we're going to add a little bit of detail. So around the masts, there's some rope uh, known as folding. And we're just going to pick that out with some wildwood. This time I'm not going to dilute it. Um, so literally it's just a little bit, just to create a bit of detail on the on the masts, to show that rope around the, the, the masts. So, um, there's only a couple of bits. So we're just going to put some of that detail in and then leave it at that. So just that little bit makes a big difference to the, the way the masts look. In the back of the Mad for War rules there's a section on paint and it's really quite useful because it sets it out in a very simple way how to do the various painting stages using the paints and the, the, the contrast paints that I'm using here today. Now I've slightly changed the order in which I do things and I've adapted the method but essentially this is all you need to know to, to paint these models to a reasonable gaming standard. So there's a section on here about you know, priming the models um, and then starting with the deck, doing going on to the, the sails and then talking about painting the hull. Now you can see here how dark the hull is with Wildwood um, I've watered man mine down slightly to produce a slightly um, paler result, but essentially, you know, it doesn't really matter. This is I'm following their instructions. Um, I, I like uh, Barry have painted with yellow gum ports and rails, um, and and then you just go on and you, you pick out flags, and that essentially is the most of it. There is a section here on uh, how to apply rigging to the ships. Now the main lines of rigging can be added when the model's finished painting so painted so I, I may possibly if in a moment of madness come back to some of my models later on and add some of these main rigging lines um, but it doesn't matter if I don't because we just want to get these down on the table at the moment. Um, and then there's a section that talks about how to base the models and this you know four pages really useful um, very basic but producing a good standard of painting that's good enough to get these really excellent models down on the table. So the models I'm using for this particular project, um, the Regix have gone with this, are the 1 1 1200th scale models from Arc Royal Miniatures the, uh, for the use with the Mad for War rules. So we played this at a show um, in Chatham a couple of months back and we had such a good time we all decided to buy a set of rules buy a small set of ships each so that we can do a collective project as a group so that overall our overall investment um, in this particular project is not much um, most of us have spent well under a hundred pounds and some have spent more obviously but the majority of us have spent relatively little money to get involved in this project and what we'll end up with is some rather large fleets and some big actions that we can play on a different size tables um, 
with a really good, simple, but fast play set of rules that we all really enjoyed. We had a thoroughly good time when we played this with Barry at Chatham uh, at the Rapture Festival. For this stage of the painting, doing the fine detail, I find it useful to rest the whole model and the base um, on the table. You get a much more steady uh, hold in the model and you ain't going to be wobbling around with shaky hands like I tend to have. Um, very small brush, um, this is a 2-0, you can use smaller if you wish. Um, tiny, tiny amount of paint on there and then just pick out the gum ports really quick. It doesn't take a lot. And this is so simple. The detail stands proud. It's really easy to paint. Um, and it just makes a huge difference to the look of the model for really minimal effort. Before I go on and do the other side of the model, I'm also going to paint some of the railings, which again is just a matter of running the brush across the top, really keeping it minimal, just getting a small amount of paint on there to highlight the railings on the edge of the ship. Then really very quickly just um, colouring in the flags, white, ready to be painted, whatever colour you need for your particular ships. Uh, in my case I'm going to go for a, a blue, just a blue squadron um, with the, the St George Cross, if you like, on a couple of the flags. Um, but I'll come back and show you that in a moment. Crow's nests with reflective green, although you can use whatever colour you think suits your ships. Um, but in mine, I'm just going to use the reflective green. So again, relatively simple, no great task, paint them out, just that little bit of extra colour, obviously both sides. Um, now we're going to start getting down to some fine detail. So there are some gun barrels sticking out the side of the ship there, which I want to pick out in brass. Um, and uh, there's a, a lamp at the back of here, again I'll pick that out in brass. And then all of the back paintwork, which is going to be covered in gold. Um, again, I'm just going to pick out the raised areas, as long as it's uh, even on both sides, that will look really good. And on some of the ships that I've completed, you know, you can see the, the, the gold work on the back of the ship looks really nice. And for my flags, as I mentioned, this is going to be the blue squadron. So I'm going to use Talisar Blue over the newly painted white flags waiting for the white to dry but the Telesar blue goes over really nice as you can see on, on these ones here um, and and then just paint out a, a white quarter so that you can do the, the St George flag on it and really easy um, you know this isn't top-notch naval painting by any means there's going to be plenty of painters out there who do these sort of metal, metal miniatures on a regular basis who are going to be screaming um, but if you just want to get some basic ships down on the table this has been really easy um, surprisingly easy in fact and uh, I think it's perhaps an, a, a, a bad characterization that this is, should be complicated it's as complicated as you make it like I say if you want to add rigging and you want to go into much more detail, it will take you longer. If you leave those things out, you've still got a perfectly serviceable, good looking miniature to play a game with. Um, once I've done that, I tend to go around my models and just check if there's any slight imperfections you know, where I've perhaps um, got the railing wrong. In there. And I can just touch them up, add a few little touch ups here and there. Um, but essentially it's finished and then once it's dry I will uh, I, I tend to spray them with a gloss varnish and then give them a brush on varnish of uh, I use the Vallejo's matte, matte varnish that I brush on nice and thick um, you know obviously avoiding major pooling but they dry really flat um, as you can see from this particular model you know there's no shiny on them they look perfectly good. I can always add some of the major uh, rigging elements later if I have a moment of complete madness. But 
essentially that's ready to be used on the table um, obviously once I've based it and as a group we're going to be putting these on bases and doing similar basing technique for everyone um, so on a, on a note so I'm more or less, I'll finish this for now I'll, I'll put these to one side on a quick note um, I've been looking at options for, for basing and I've been just practicing on a couple of bases um, so we've been I've been coming up with some different blue green and more blue um, and then I've used some of the Vallejo's water texture over the top um, and it produces a pretty good result. We've yet to have a go of trying these out on the actual bases. We're going to get pill shaped bases to put our ships on. But um, I, I quite like this so I'm going to recommend this as my option to the group. And that would finish it off. Um, obviously we haven't got to that stage as a group yet so I can't show you a completely finished model. But certainly as far as the ships are concerned um, I think that looks perfectly serviceable um, considering I've never painted uh, a 1 to 1200 scale ship in my life. Um, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously it's nowhere near the same quality as the, the models that Barry brought along to our game at Rapture. Um, but that's maybe something to aspire to at a later stage. But from the point of view of wanting to get figures on the table um, and actually be able to play a game, I'm more than happy with that. And I think that's basically the standard the group's going to try and aim for. Um, and you know these models are really nicely detailed, and that's the best bit about them. Um, you know the detail makes it a, do a doddle to paint, and contrast paints are so easy for these models. So there you have it, a really quick and simple guide to painting the Art Royal miniatures. Um, you know, and in true Blue Peter style, here's some I prepared earlier. Um, you know, I think they look really nice. Considering I've never painted anything like this before in my life, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm sure my technique will improve as I go along, but what I've done is basically followed the technique from the rule book, uh, the section at the back about painting the models. There's a few slight variations in the way I do things, but actually the work of not very long at all. Within a couple of hours, even allowing for drying time, you can have one or two of these ships already painted. and get them out on the table relatively quickly so that you can start enjoying the rules. Well, I hope you found that interesting um, and of course if you have please like, subscribe and share and please go over to the League of Augsburg website and have a look at the Ark Royal range of ships, they really are very nice um, and he does squadron packs as well so you can save a bit of money if you're going to buy more than one ship at a time. Um, very good. Uh, and the rules are really excellent, really worth having a read, packed full of history and lovely colour pictures. It's actually a really useful resource for the whole period that covered by the rules, so well worth checking out the Mad for War rules as well.